Well, located on the eastern coast of Africa, the country of Mozambique was once one of the poorest in the world. And that was before a civil war that nearly tore it apart. But the fortunes are changing, and not just economically. Joining us for more is Heidi Baker. She's the co-founder of Iris Ministry, has been working as a missionary in Mozambique for nearly 20 years. Heidi, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Give us the update on Mozambique. What's what's happening in uh, the country? Well, it's the fastest growing economy in the world in, well, in wow. Africa. Who knew? Um, who knew? And God's crashing in. People are mm. just coming to Jesus. Um, there's a province that was uh, people of another faith. And the government announced that you're, it's you're no being politically longer. You're correct. <laughs> uh, I am. I am. People of another faith. And they came. Care to name the faith. <laughs> they came. Mozambique was known as the battleground. Right. But in the north, there were, there were all three provinces were mm -hmm. of another faith. And the province where we live, Cabo Delgado, they've officially announced, the government announced that it's no longer of the other faith, that it's a Christian province. And the government bowed their knees to Jesus and they let our senior leaders, Mozambican leaders, lay hands on them and inaugurate them. So I that is That is excited. truly unbelievable. Yeah, I know. It's historic. Because those same leaders are literally putting their life on the line. Yeah. They are. Because the other faith will come and kill you for doing that. Yeah, we've been in trouble, but they're, see, Jesus keeps showing up. So there'll be, he, he there's <laughs> this great story of, again, a leaders, leaders, mm -hmm. big chief leaders. And the queen was there, the queen of the village. And she brought a blind man, um, no, a blind lady to our meeting. Nothing happened. She went back to her hut blind. In the middle of the night, this is a lady of another faith. You can imagine which one. And she just goes to sleep and suddenly in the middle of the night in a hut with no electricity, her eyes open up. Jesus opens her eyes. She doesn't know who opened her eyes. Two doves she sees come down from heaven and land on her shoulder. They have flowers in their beaks. And so she runs to the mosque. Okay. She runs to the mosque and she said, my eyes open up. I was at this meeting last night where they're talking about Jesus. And the Shea said, go ahead, go to the Christians. They can explain this to you. And she, of course, gave her life to Jesus. The queen of the village gave her life to Jesus. The chief gave him life to Jesus. That's the stuff that's happening. Jesus is showing up. That is a miracle. I know. That is phenomenal. Like straight out of the pages of the Bible, miracle. Yeah. Wow. You said that ad adoption was on your heart. Spirit of adoption, um, I think in the Western world, in the Eastern world, in the African world, a lot of people still have orphan spirits. Mm -hmm. um, we take in literal orphans, but they don't stay that way. You know, when Daddy God takes a hold of your life, then you start to find out who you are and you're no longer afraid. And I feel like this spirit of adoption is, is here to touch the church so that people In America, worried. when you say the word adoption, people think about literal adoption. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about a spiritual concept where people no longer feel estranged from God, that, yeah. some, that God is away from them, that he doesn't care about them, that he's way off in heaven, and he's not right here with us right now. Yeah, where he takes their orphan spirit. You know, orphan spirit wants to get all they can for themselves. Mm. They're afraid to, to give their life. They're afraid that they might not get enough. They might not get fed. They might not get enough. They're afraid, afraid to trust. Yeah. But when the spirit of adoption hits you, you know, it's that Ephesians, Holy Spirit, you're not an orphan, you're a son. When that hits you, then everything changes and you're free to give your life away because you know who you are. Daddy loves you so you can just jump on his feet and yield your life and do anything and go anywhere. And you're not just talking, you're living it. Because oh, you've yeah. been giving your life away for 20 years. Oh, 37. I've 37? been preaching the gospel really? for 37 years. Yeah. What, what take, took you to Mozambique? I had a, a, a vision when I was 16. I had just become a Christian. 
and I was worshiping the Lord. I was on the fifth day of a fast, and I was just in the glory in this little tiny Pentecostal church, and the presence, his presence just fell on me, and I was covered in this white light, and the only time, 37 years of living for him, that I heard an audible voice. Mm. He said to go to Africa, Asia, and England. Been to Asia 12 years with my husband, Roland, in UK for three. And then it was Africa. And I'm, where in Africa, Lord? Africa is a huge place. Yeah. Where are we going? He said, go to the poorest nation on the earth. That was Mozambique. And I just sat on the street corner and learned the language from the children. And, and then he said, bring them home. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a home. But he gave us homes. And... He gave us lots of homes. Now we have thousands of homes and thousands of churches. And the pastors know and understand that all pastors take home orphans. How is all of this being supported? Um, <laughs> the beautiful body of Christ. <laughs> just people care. So this is you know. people from around the world? Around the world. They just care. You know, we're, we just, we figure if God calls you, to do something, then he'll pay for it. Yes. And kids are on his heart, starving kids. The I church like to say is on his heart. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. Yeah. I mean, how could you worry <laughs> about that if he yeah. says to take every if he child? Says do it, do it. He says to build schools, clinics, hospitals, university, whatever he says. You guys know it well here. You can't freak out about it. If you're a daughter, you're a son, and he says to do it, then you know you have a huge family. You know, you never do anything alone. We mm. all need each other, and we're like a connected net. He showed me that one day. I was praying about what's, you know, what's the vision for Iris? What, what are you doing? And I saw this huge net, and I'm thinking, that's the Iris net. And I heard the Lord, you know, in the internal voice that laughed at me. He's like, that's not Iris. That's the, that's the whole net. And he's showing me people like yourselves. He's showing me all these different YWAM and AG and, and 700 Club and, and Nazarene and all these different movements, Wycliffe and all the translators. And he says, you're this little piece, the little tiny piece of the net. And then I saw a cord coming down from heaven, like from with angels, you know weaving it together and he said only when you work together can you bring in the harvest and uh it was powerful oh, very true it was so powerful what, what do you think about america today we seem to be deeply divided uh there seems to be a lot of rancor and uh, people literally throwing um incredibly harsh words at each other uh do you see us ever coming back together again I think we need to get low and we need to go slow and listen to one another. Mm. We need to listen to one another because there are things on, on people's hearts that, that need to be shared. And if we just attack and don't listen, then we miss it. And as we go low and slow and we listen to one another and we cry out for mercy, we cry out for God's mercy and grace. I believe he'll, he'll heal our land. And I've been coming to him. I travel a third of my life. And uh, I've been coming more often here to call mm -hmm. young people into their destinies and to believe that if they're called into the political realm, that they'll do whatever it takes to be formed, to be trained, to be to be in the place where they can literally speak into the nation. I feel like God wants to call some kids out there who are still being formed to rise up, to shine in dark places. And um, right now there's a lot of darkness and we have but, to make a but change. I agree with you, the, the, the generation coming up right now gives me so, so much hope. Yeah. They are so active, they want to change the world, they want they want to improve the world, and, and they're not going to give up. And I love that. All right. Um, I think we're out of time. We can talk forever. <laughs> Bless you. Um, thanks for being with us. Thanks for all you do. If you want more information about Iris Ministries, all you have to do is go to CBN.com. Terry, over to you.